Hi, my name is Katie and this is my channel So Tattered and this is my second quilt tube. Um, I did a quilting video last month or it's been over a month ago and I've got a really great response and lots of feedback about keeping the two separate because not everybody does cross stitch and quilting and so I'm going to go forward with this um, plan of having two different I guess playlist. I'm gonna have to figure all that out, but I'll be sure to label them if it's a quilt video or a cross stitch video so that um, you'll know if you want to watch it or not. <laughs> Though I hope that my cross stitch friends still come over here and watch this one because I am gonna talk about sewing and quilting, but a lot of other things too. And maybe it might inspire my non quilter friends to start. Um, I know that that's what happened to me. I got drugged down the cross stitch hole because of the people who do both. And I watched the quilters who then also cross stitch and then I was like, hey, maybe I do want to cross stitch also. <laughs> so uh, I, I do hope that you guys will watch both. Um, but yeah, I, it was funny because when I made the video, I had somebody comment that the quilting with the sister leaves are also starting a quilt kind of like floss tube but calling it quilt tube and because there's just such a need for it and we need to um, build up our community like the cross stitch community has because I mean everybody who cross stitch knows that the floss tube community is really incredible and it's just built us to be it's an incredible community where you can have friends all over the world and uh, I didn't realize just how incredible it was until I started uh, my own channel and then I went from having no cross stitch friends to having amazing relationships with so many people and all over the world and it's been extremely rewarding and so if we can do that with the quilting community because we're out there we just uh, don't have the right format to do this with um, I know there's some who do this already I would say that Pat Sloan is probably probably one of the biggest ones because she's on here almost every day and you get to see her and build a relationship with her and so when I think about people who have brought our community closer together I'd say she's one that comes to mind um, there's lots of great quilters to watch um, I've even had new ones brought to my attention recently that I'll talk about but so I'm hoping that this is gonna help build up the quilting community and we can all be a tight-knit community like the cross stitch community is so um, yeah just that's it and then, so I guess I'll just talk about things that I've worked on. I'm very, oh, what's the word? I'm all over the place, for lack of a better word. Um, I, I bounce around a lot. I get inspired by something. I love the creative process of making. And so when something inspires me, I pretty much abandon what I'm working on and then go try it out and see if I can do it or like it or, you know, it's, but it's, it's okay. Just don't be mad at me for it. If I say, "Oh, I'm going to be working on this," you know, for my next video, and then you don't see it because I didn't do it, but it's okay. I still did things. <laughs> I just didn't do that particular thing. And yes, my word was supposed to be is intentional, and I wanted to be more intentional with things that I do, but that's not going so great. I'm still doing things, I'm just not doing the things that I said I was going to be doing or that I had planned to be doing, but it's okay because I'm still doing things. So that's my excuse anyways. It's not like I'm not doing anything. I'm just not doing the thing that I said I was going to do. So anyways, so I'm going to bounce around a little bit too on the things I'm working on and this is not in any kind of order or anything, but I'll start with things that I finished working on. So with quilting those projects take a long time whereas um, just like in cross stitch you want to do smalls to get that 
instant gratification of finishing something. And so I had a few of those things that I did do, and because Easter is upon us, I thought I would show some past things that I've worked on that were um, fun. So my first one that I'm gonna talk about is this little bunny, which is so funny because when I first made him, I thought, oh, people aren't gonna like that. But on Instagram, people really liked them and asked me lots of questions, so hopefully now I can answer them here on this video. But this was a little bunny that I made, and um, I don't know this fabric. It's something that's, I don't know, I don't know where I got it from, but it's been sitting in my stash for a long time. But what I did was I had two pieces of fabric mm -hmm. and um, the chenillet 3 8 mm -hmm. um, and I sandwiched it between the fabric while I was sewing it. And then uh, I cut a hole in the back and I stuffed it and then added a button and this little trim. This trim is from an Etsy shop called Purple Paper Mountain. I'll link them below. But it's a really great shop. She has tons of trim in different colors and textures and great prices and very fast shipping. So I highly recommend that shop and I'll put it down below. But um, it was so fun to make and just a really quick, satisfying little project. <laughs> so I got that one done. And then um, this pillow I made, um, I got this was a cutter block that I got at the boxcar quilt shop and uh, they will take old quilts that can't be saved and cut them and then sell them for projects and so I found this in their bin and it's an old Dresden plate and so I thought I would turn it into a pillow and then I just um, cut out a bunny shaped silhouette and put them in there and added a button and more trim from the purple paper mountain and I think it turned out really cute and then so I did the raw edged um, sewing around the edge with the 5 8 chenille it so that turned out really cute and it's all frayed and you know like I like it <laughs> so that was very fun to put together and um, some other things that I made these oh gosh it's gotta have been had to have been a couple years ago um, but shabby fabrics here on YouTube they did a tutorial on these carrots and I tried to find the pattern and I couldn't find it but they did a tutorial but they also sold the pattern and um, but aren't they adorable these were really fun to make this uh, fabric is from laundry basket quilts and these are pipe cleaners in here so they can be you know, molded to how you want them this is so much fun to make and so you can I'll try to find the video and link it down below but I loved making these lots of fun I think they even sold kits. I know they did when they first made them. Um, so that's from a few years ago. And then yesterday <laughs> I took a break from cleaning and I was looking through YouTube and I found a video, which I meant to write down, pins, pins and something. It'll be down below. But she was showing how to make fabric eggs that have pockets on the back and so uh, I was like oh that looks like fun and something I could do for I have a lot of neighborhood kids they play outside a lot it's, it's a lot of fun to watch them so I uh, I thought oh I can make those for the kids in the neighborhood and so I made a couple just to see how it would go and my first one I didn't want to spend too much time on the first one because I thought oh what if it doesn't work out <laughs> and I messed up some good fabric or something so um, I just sewed some pieces of scraps together and then I took um, I went on Google and found an egg silhouette and printed it out cut it out and then that's what I used for the shape and then was so much fun to make so I made it and it has a little pocket and then after I did this one I thought oh I should make them 
you know, a little cuter. And so I did another one and I added the 3 8 chenille it to it. And then um, after I did that, I also realized that I liked to, on the pocket, do a top stitch just to make it look neater. Um, but I thought these were adorable. And so I'm definitely going to make a ton of these for the kids. And then I was cleaning today for making this video and I was like, I came across blocks that I made and I thought, oh my gosh, these would make the cutest eggs. <laughs> so I made more. And so I took these. So when I say, let me explain what I mean by blocks because this is kind of a weird thing that I've, I've done. Let me get the quilt. Okay, so years ago I bought this quilt and it was like 10 bucks because it was a mess. I mean, the parts of it were missing. It was, it looked like a dog chewed it up. <laughs> it's just the saddest little quilt. So um, I thought, well, I can maybe salvage some of it and use it for other things. And But it's just the funnest quilt. I love this thing. I've used it for so many things. And so what I've done is, on the edges, I have taken the fabric that's on here and just, uh, sorry, you're going to hear my son. <laughs> um, I took the quilting stitch out and then so, and then gotten as big of a piece as I can of the fabric all as much as I could. Um, but so I would do that and then I'd make things out of it. She's a mess. She's falling apart on the floor right now. And then what I end up with is, let's see, so like pieces like this. Just these tiny little paper thin pieces of fabric that me being the nerd that I am, I couldn't throw it away or anything. So I, what I do is I arrange them on a piece of fabric like this. And then I will do, oh, I'll just show you this. I'll do this. <laughs> so lots of people have called it different things. People have called it, I first learned this method of stitching on top of layers of fabric, uh, boro stitching. Um, I... I'm Japanese on my mom's side. Um, my grandmother's from Okinawa. And so uh, I just went down this amazing rabbit hole of um, Japanese textiles and things like that. And so um, I learned, you know, sashiko and boro. And boro is basically, they used it a long time ago to patch up clothes. Long story short. They're just. You know, the farmers out in the fields would get holes in their clothes and then they would put patches on top, just pieces of fabric on top, and then stitch on top of it instead of, I don't know, it just, it looks like this. <laughs> you should look it up. It's really incredible. But I know a lot of people now are, are doing it and they're calling, or not now, I mean, they have for a long time, but I see it a lot called slow stitching and it is very therapeutic. You just sit there and you're just on top of fabric. No rules, none of that. Um, I did watch, oh, I wrote it down, uh, K3N Cloth Tales. Her name's Catherine. I'll link her down below, but she was doing it. Oh, I forget what she calls it. Quanda? Uh, I don't know. Quandi? I'm going to mess. I'm going to mess that up so bad. <laughs> Anyways, I'll link it down below. And it's basically the same thing. There's a little bit more rules of um, folding under the corners and things like that. But I love it because it just seems, it's just like anything goes. You just kind of want to overlap pieces and any form that looks good, pleasing to the eye, and then just run a long stitch down. Just trying to get it enough to cover up um, any parts that would come up. If it frays, it's okay. It's pretty. It adds to it. So I made a lot of blocks that look like this. 
And so what I use what's this? It's um it's like a a really thick thread yarn. I can't uh, and then um that's what I use to do the stitching. I got it on Etsy. Um, if I can remember, I bought this years ago. If I can remember, I'll link it down below. But that's just the basic method. You just take it and you just, there's no rules. Just whatever looks good. It's supposed to be creative and fun. So I did that, and you'll see that in a lot of the things that I'm going to show you that I made. But I, so I had a lot of those blocks. Going back to the eggs, <laughs> I made blocks like that, and I thought I'll use them for something eventually. And I made the eggs and so of those I did these and I thought they turned out so cute and you just put candy or money or whatever and it has a nice pocket so you can really secure, secure it in there and it's not going anywhere um, but they were so fun to make I think these are adorable and so I'm going to be making a lot more and then it made me think I wish I would have finished this big piece and I would have had more <laughs> to make, make more of them but that's just a really fun I don't know I, I get a lot of joy out of creating things and that's a fun creative process for me and so and then let's see what am I going to move on to next I have a lot of things here so I'm trying to not be completely scattered, but I feel like it already happened. Oh, I was going to show you the eggs thing. So this was like the silhouette, and I just, um, I, I use, I'm going to try to do better about talking about gadgets and tools and things like that, because I know I love that part of, of these videos, but I use the Frixon, Frixon, Friction pen, and it erases with heat. I know a lot of, um, quilters already know about this but so I would just do that I just trace this around the fabric and then I made extra templates and made sure that I could cut the top and the po bottom part with an extra about an, uh, about an inch overlay for the pocket so these pieces would be the pocket and there's a lining and then there's the tutorial you go to go watch it it's really good but it is really awesome because you just lay the pieces together in one layer so all the way around and then I used um, these pinking shears that has the the zigzag edge and then you just cut it around there and then flip it through the pocket and you're done it's awesome oh I did I do love this clover it's a herring herring marker is that what they call that I forget what they call it, but it's where you can make your lines on your quilt so you don't have to mark up your quilt. You can just do it with this, but it's great for turning corners and things like that. It works perfect for curved edges of the eggs. So it's clover. I got it on Amazon probably. So there's all of that. And then, okay, I told people I was going to make a tutorial for this and I didn't. I'm not good with tutorials. I feel like when I'm making them that I don't do a good job and that makes me not want to make them. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about it here and then I'll just tell people, oh, you have to go to my quilt video to see that. I'm not going to do a tutorial, I'm just going to do a walkthrough. So I made a lot of these little boxes and um, out of fabric, I like that was the edge, um, and there are super easy okay so you get one they come I think it was a package of six there are these um, cardboard boxes from Hobby Lobby cardboard and so what I do is I, I get the cardboard I get the Mod Podge for fabric and then I get a brush and a strip of fabric. <laughs> I want it to be a little bit 
wider than the box. And what I would do is just brush on a thin layer of the Mod, Mod Podge. I keep wanting to call it Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Okay. So I just put a little bit down and then I stick it on there really good. And then I flip, I flip it over. And then I start gluing a little bit at a time. And as I'm doing it, I'm pushing it down. And flip it up and do a little bit more. And then I get I push it down. And you try to get it as tight as you can all the way down. And then when you come to the end, I my first one, which was this one, I thought, oh, I'll fold it over and make it look like a nice clean edge. That added too much bulk and I couldn't get the lid on. <laughs> so I learned with my second one. If you just have it go over just slightly and then um, put the Mod Podge on top, um, it works much better. Very thin. So as soon as you get it all the way around and it overlaps a little so it covers it completely, then you're going to take the Mod, Mod Podge and you're going to brush it all the way around. Very thin layer. And then you'll take your little scissors and you'll just cut the edge so it lines up with the edge of the box. And just cut it. Get in there and cut it. Top and bottom. And then I and then when I would do that, I just put it upside down on the Mod Podge and let it dry. And that's the hardest part is waiting for it to dry. Because those things stay tacky for a while. And then just paint your lid. Just paint your lid and you're done. That's it. Easy. So that's how you make these. Uh, with fabric and it's really cool because the fabric it it just doesn't even look like fabric anymore it looks because it's got a shimmer to it I'll insert a picture either before or somewhere of the three I made three big ones and uh, they are fun to make so I need to make more for spring and seasonals and all that and then um, you can do anything with them this one I put in extra threads from my sewing machine um, I made another one into a pin cushion, which is great because you have the lid that goes on top. So just fun, just fun things to do. Very inexpensive um, and easy. Okay, so there was that. <laughs> Try not to bounce around too much. Um, okay, so that's all kind of like the sewing but not quilting yeah. stuff. Back to the raw edge sewing. Okay, so I let me grab this. I used to do this all the time, the raw edge sewing, and but not with the sewing machine. I think I had a couple times, but not really. Anyways, so basic same thing I was showing you earlier with the boro stitches or the slow stitching is um, you would do it. I mean these coasters, you would do it, but with the sewing machine. So it's super fast. <laughs> so what I did was I took a square piece of batting and then I layered the fabric on top. Just whatever looked good. And then I did really tight quilting. And then um, I got something round. I'm, I used one of those big round ribbon things that I got from Costco. One of the big ones that you can get the Holt ribbon, Christmas ribbon, I got that to use as the template. And I drew a circle with that and then cut it and then put the backing, you know, right sides together. And then flipped it inside out and did a top stitch all the way around. So that secured that opening. So I'm not, I don't like to do what is that, the ladder stitch, or what, I don't like doing that, I don't know why, it's funny, because I stitch all the time, and I love to stitch, but I don't like doing that, <laughs> so I just do the top stitch all the way around, so I did that, and then I thought, oh, that would make a cute project bag, so I made a bag, and if you've, you follow me on Instagram, you've seen all this, but, um, so exact same concept, just with, uh, sewing, it's fun. And you'll get pieces that you don't catch. And that's okay. Because they'll you'll have little bits of fraying or threads. And I don't mind it. I think it just adds to the look of it. So I thought that turned out really cute. 
And so I was like, I should be doing more of that stuff because that was really fun, easy project. And so I did do a little bit more the other day because I, golly, you guys, I don't know how you're going to keep up with me because I keep going to all these different things. I'm just going to show you all the things. Okay, so I was on Instagram. It's funny because I know that Lisa, the um, kindred stitcher, she same thing because she I was watching her the other day. She says, I was looking on Instagram and I saw this um, ad for the stickers. And I was like, oh, yep, yeah, me too. I had I bought them a while back and they came in and I was like, eh, and I didn't get to them. And then when I saw her talking about it, I was like, I should use those. So it's taper, taperolo Taperology. Um, and they were, they make rub-on stickers. And I got two different kinds. I got one with plants and animal and animals. And basically, they give you instructions and a little wooden stick to rub them on. But you rub them. You put it on fabric or paper. You, I think you put it on just about anything. I think the only thing you can't put it on is, I was reading, silicone. Maybe it won't stick to silicone or... Let me see. Let me see. Uh, not washable, but they are, they're not waterproof, but they're water resistant. And they can be used on any smooth surface like plastic, fabric, wood, metal, glass, among others. It will not work on surfaces such as silicone, latex, as well as matte surfaces. Mm. You think it would stick to matte surfaces? I don't know. That's what it says. So you basically just cut out the one you want. You put it on your fabric or paper or whatnot, and you rub it. They give you. I'm making a mess all this stuff in front of me. They give you popsicle sticks. <laughs> That's what came. But I was like, oh, I'm gonna use this thing. I, I don't know where I got this from, but it's more comfortable in my hand. So I did it like this. And then uh, you just rub it on there and then you take off the top layer that's on the sticker and ta-da! How cute is that bunny? <laughs> and I was worried about it at first because I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. It's a sticker on the fabric. But it really feels like it's one with the fabric. Um, but it does say water resistant, so I'm sure that it'll be okay for cups and things like that. But it's just not waterproof, so you can't wash them. So once these things get gross, they'll just have to go out. But I'm going to enjoy them until they do. So I did the, ba the same basic concept of just layering fabric on a piece of batting. And then I stitched down, but I saved this for the outside because I didn't think that it would stick very well if it was quilted. Um, so I did it this way. So I just, once I did all the quilting, I put the sticker on the piece of fabric and then I stitched around this piece of fabric on here. This is really cute too because you can use those uh, cute little salvages that come on your fabric. Fun. So I made those with those stickers. It was really cool too because they also gave me a gift for you. They gave me extra Valentine's Day stickers. Really cute. I think they're fun and I'm sure I'm going to find tons of ways to use them. So that's that. Put that on there so I don't lose it. Okay, what else did I do? Oh, and I made this bag too. I just do a regular zipper bag with um, lining and then the boxed bottom so that it can stand. Made that. And so that's that. So that's enough of that slow stitching stuff. You're not interested. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done talking about it. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, things that I've been working on. Uh, well, no, I guess I'll do some finishes. This quilt, I made it really fast. I needed something fast and fun and so I had been saying I was going to make it forever. I finally did um, American Jane patterns and it's the cherry cherry quilt and it's called that because their fussy cuts in the middle are cherries 
and uh, so I did it but with birds and I love it I had so, it's so quirky and so me like the it's just whimsy and eclectic and I just wanted something bright and fun and different from quilts that I've made recently and um, yeah, so I just fussy cut the birds and then just did the the borders around them. It was a lot of fun to make. I'll uh, insert a picture somewhere in here. But yeah, I love how it turned out. It's fun. Um, I hadn't done anything like that before, so that was a fun adventure for me. So I made that, and it's the birds are from an older line from Laundry Basket, but you can still get it. I, I see it all the time. And she made it in different colorways too. It's just beautiful. Most of the fabrics in there are Laundry Basket. And then, um, so that's one that I finished, but I haven't quilted yet. I'm going to try to get that done next. Um, I also finished uh, a baby quilt for my brother and his wife. Um, they are, they're fostering with the hopes to adopt and we're going to pray, <laughs> praying for them really hard. So I thought I would make her a baby quilt and so I used Fabric Line um, Cloud 9 by Laundry Basket and it was a charm pack and I just cut them into 5 inch squares and then um, put them together. It was so fun and I loved, I used the, for baby quilts especially, I like to use the chenille trim. So I did, for the outside, I used, for the binding, the 5 8 for binding. There is quilting tutorials on how to do the binding with chenille on YouTube. And then when I did the, because I liked the pastels and everything, but I was like, oh, it just needs a little something. So that's when I added the heart. And with that, I used the 3 8 so I just freehand cut a heart and then it was the last thing I did. So I had it had this all finished and then I did a freehand of the heart, put it down, stitched around it with the chenille it, and then you throw it in the wash and the dryer and watch the magic happen. It gets so sweet and loved and worn and I I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I'm gonna put that in the mail to get shipped out to them and um, yay! <laughs> so I got that one done and then I was also working on my great niece's quilt. I showed y'all I was working with that Ponderosa and uh, I didn't get as far as I'd hoped but I came up with a plan so that was good and so what I did was because it was a panel um, really cute panels. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. So I cut them up to be the same measurement as a four patch. Because I had the panel and a, a charm pack. So I'm just going to stagger them every other or whatnot. To make that into a quilt so I was glad that I had a plan but I gotta get on it because her birthday is next month and I need to get that done so that one will be done because I have a deadline give me a deadline and I'll get it done <laughs> okay so there's that one and then um oh, I was so proud of myself so for like two nights I told myself okay if I I'm going to do my cross stitch in the morning and then at night if I get any time to stitch I'm going to do hand stitching, hand sewing. So I pulled out my hexes. I'm like this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on the hexes. And then I was so excited. I finished one. 
I finished the whole thing. And then I got so excited about finishing, I didn't do any more. It's terrible. That's what happened. And so, and then I was like, oh, I really want to work on this cross stitch. And then so I, I didn't pick it back up. But it felt good to get one done. And so now I just need to work on the other one. I'm hoping that this is going to um, inspire me. Just saying this out loud and admitting that I failed is going to inspire me to pick it up again at night and do it. Because I think it turned out great. I'm really excited about it. I'm just, but at this rate, it's a lifelong project that I'm just, I gotta get on it. Gotta get on it. Okay, um, what else whip wise do I have? Oh, I did do, this another one that's shameful. Summer Moon was the one I was working on, and I said, oh, I'm gonna work on it really hard. I didn't. I got one block done. But I got one block done. It was a really hard block. So it's these teeny tiny, <laughs> teeny tiny little triangles. But I got them done, and I was really excited about looking at that back. <laughs> it was a lot of work, because I really had to just... Those are some tiny little pieces to work through, and I really took my time, because I was determined that this was not going to be a mess. So I did that one, and then I, I didn't touch it again, because it was exhausting. No. <laughs> it's fine. I'll get back to it, though, because I do love it. And then I also worked on, um, I went into this one knowing that mine was not going to be as big as everybody else's, but the tiny nine patch challenge that is based off of an antique quilt. I did some more blocks, but I didn't do them every week. I think I only got these 10 plus a few others done, but I'm not looking for a king size quilt. I'm looking for a throw. <laughs> but a lot of these came from the quilt behind me. My kid is being really loud. <laughs> he's got something. He's he's scripting something back there. At least it's not the cat. <laughs> I like how they turned out. So, those are my my blocks that I finished, and then I'll try to, I'll just sporadically throughout the year, whatever I have at the end of the year, that's how big that quilt's going to be, and I'm going to be happy with it. If it is a, just a tiny little table topper, it's fine. It's still going to be wonderful. I'm going to have fun doing it. Okay, and then um, I know I showed it in my cross-stitch video behind me, but just in case there are people who don't watch my floss video. The reason I showed it in my cross stitch video, because you see there's the overlapping. Um, I had two quilts quilted by Carol Saltbox Stitcher. She is a floss tuber, one of the OGs, and she's amazing. And so I sent them to her because my tops were piling up and I needed to get some quilted so I didn't feel so bogged down. And I'm so glad I did because she made them beautiful. But I talked about it on cross stitch because she's a floss tuber and everybody knows her there. So, but I also wanted to show it here because she did an amazing job. So I'm gonna grab those. Okay. So this one. It's huge. <laughs> but it's a. Uh, I'll insert a picture. But it was. Uh, one that the Fat Quarter Shop did as a sew along. I believe they did it as a sew along. Yeah, because I got behind. And uh, but it's a Susan Aki pattern, and it came out of this book, Summer Memories. And uh, so I got that one done, and Carol did a beautiful job quilting it. It's got these swirls in it. It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> and then this one, I don't know where the pattern came from. That's how long it was in my pile of tops. But it's Jo Morton Fabrics. And um, I know that it's in a book because I saw it in a book, but I don't think that that's where I got the pattern from. And she did a beautiful job with this one it has leaves and swirls 
and it's lovely. And so I'll put pictures of that in the beginning or end or somewhere. And then um, that is it on those things. Now I'm going to start talking about things that I've picked up recently. Um, I, let's see, I was going to show you all this. So when I go to the box car, I was telling you guys that they have those cutter quilt pieces. Look at this one, it's so sad. It's a mess. But I picked this one up because it goes with one that I picked up at another time. I know, they don't look anything alike because I had to take the front off. This was the one that I realized that this had a quilt underneath it. It was this on top. And I took it off and I found this. And then somebody, I put it on Instagram. Hey, does anybody know what this block is? Because I would love to remake this quilt. And so I bought the extra piece because I'm like, well, I want to know what the rest of it looked like. <laughs> so I'm going to be pulling the threads out to find out what it's like underneath. Mm -hmm. But um, somebody was so kind and they said, oh, if you get on Betsy Chechian's, uh blog, she has that on there. And they told me where to find it. And sure enough, it's a block that she has already done. And so I am excited to figure it out and make it into a quilt. So that is on my list of things that I'm going to want to work on. And then I also picked up this one. But um, I just thought that was really cool that there was a quilt underneath the quilt that was really beautiful. And I, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason why she covered it up. But it's pretty and I love it. And I'm going to try to remake it the best that I can. Um, other things I purchased, oh, I went to, um, McKinney Downtown Dry Goods. Oh my gosh. That place is incredible. Especially for somebody like me. I love fat quarters. I love it when a shop has tons and tons of fat quarters and I can just pick all the pretty ones that I like. They're not have to be in the same line or anything like that. I just like to pick up fat quarters. And, um, so I love that shop. They have a huge selection of fat quarters and everything else you can think of. And so I got this because I was saying I have not, I don't have a green quilt and this is by Laundry Basket. It's an older, I think it came out a couple years ago, but it's um, Green Thumb. And I was so excited about it that they still had one. And um, so I've got that one. And then um, at Boxcar, so funny. I went to a quilt retreat at Boxcar. And um, one of the ladies there, Sarah, she was cutting up fabric. I love Civil War reproductions, y'all all know that. Um, I feel like a lot of times I'm on an island <laughs> at get-togethers because not a lot of people that I sew with or anything like reproduction Civil War fabrics. And so when she was cutting it up, I got so excited. And she was not cutting it for herself. She's cutting it for a kit. <laughs> but then it was still exciting because, oh my gosh, you guys are going to carry a kit with Civil War reproduction fabrics very exciting for me and she said yes and so um, when they finished kitting it up they let me know and the next time I went up there for my sit and stitch I picked up the kit and it is from Temecula Quilt Company and it's called Curated Cotton Medallion and it was a block of the month but they just went ahead and sold it as a whole kit so I got it So you can get this at Boxcar, and it's beautiful. And I'll open it and show you. It comes in a really nice box with the pattern, and then the fabrics. It's going to be really beautiful. I'm excited about it. Um, I will say. I have a weird thing that you guys are going to think is silly, but I'm just going to share it with you because it's what I do. I just tell you guys and you can think I'm a nut, but I think it's because I was a kid in the 80s and when I think about the 80s, I think about 
blue, pink, and ducks. And I don't like it. I don't like the blue and the pink and those white ducks. They're just mm -hmm. everywhere. And so, so when I see trends come back from the 80s, I think, ugh, why would you do that? Why would you bring those acid wash jeans back? Why are the, the jeans up to here again? I just, I don't know. I think it's just because that was cool for my parents and grandparents. And so I will never look at anything from the 80s and think, oh, that was so cool. I won't. So <laughs> this has pink and blues together. I like pinks. I like blues. I don't like them together because of the, the because of that. And I know it's just a silly thing in my head. I love these fabrics in this quilt kit. Love them. But seeing the pinks and the blues together is it's causing me some problems. So I think that I am going to swap one of them out, either the blue or the pink. But one of them is going to have to be swapped, which is fine because I'll just throw up my stash, and because I love building onto my stash, I love all the fabrics. I just don't want them together. <laughs> my quilt. I know that's silly. I just, I'm just keeping it real with you guys. That's just how my brain works. I don't know. Now, if it was from the 90s, it's so cool. Because I was a teenager in the 90s, and everything that was teen-related in the 90s, I'm all about it. As you guys can tell, I'm Beastie Boys and all the weird clothes, shirts I wear. I'm a, I'm a t-shirt collector. Um, but yeah, so weird side note. I will change out one of the colors. I don't know which one, but I love the pattern. And I love the fabrics, and I'm excited to get started. And it is some tiny, tiny pieces. That's okay. I like tiny pieces. And then I also, oh, it was really fun. So uh, I did a trip with two friends, Lisa and Trinka, and we went up to Tulsa to go to the Silver Needle, which is a cross-stitch shop up in Tulsa. And uh, while we were there, uh, Lisa said, hey, do you want me to take you to the quilt shop out there? And I was like, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> And so she did, and it's called the Quilting Studio, so I've never been there before, and it's a really cute shop, so if you were in the Tulsa area, there's a quilt shop, Quilting Studio, and it's worth the stop, because not only, I love it when you go into a quilt shop and it's decorated really cute, and just adds to the whole feel of it, and, uh, but, yes, so I picked up some fat quarters, they're so pretty. And so I'll just be throwing that into my pile of stuff. And, uh, oh, and they gave me a free pattern, which I thought was really cool because I bought the fat quarters. I thought, oh, we'd give our fat quarter a pattern. So <laughs> that was cute and really nice of them. So I got that. And then um, that is it for the things that I picked up. Um, I was going to do a couple of little tidbit information things to kind of, um, just some cool things that I do to help me that I've learned from other people. Um, I was going to talk about starching. Let me go grab my can. Okay. So I got this, I get, I get this Niagara faultless. I learned this method from Kimberly fat quarter shop. I was always struggling with my piecing, not being precise it would drive me nuts and then I would feel bad about my quilts and so when she talked about starching I thought I'm gonna give that a try so I did and I love hate it <laughs> I love the results I get from starching I starch everything because it does help a lot with a lot of different things so I will take it and I will just get the whole thing just wet with you don't want to see any dry spots and then I hang it up to dry if it's not muggy outside, which it has been lately, then um, I'll put it outside. It'll dry super fast. But if it is, if it's all gross outside, it won't. I'll just have to dry it inside my house. But, um, so yes, things I love about starching. I love the accuracy. I love, because when you go to cut it, it doesn't shift on you. Um, when you go to stitch it, it doesn't shift. Um, I, I the accuracy is the number one reason why I starch. Things I don't like about starching. 
the whole process of starching. You have to do it and then wait for it to dry. Whereas me, I'm like, oh, I want to make that and I have to wait until I can starch and let it dry. And that's really annoying. Um, another con to starching is you have to keep those fabrics separate. So y you don't want to end up in your scraps with pieces that are starched and then pieces that aren't. Because when you go to sew them together in a quilt and you go to wash it, they're gonna shrink differently. Which is also another con because I love the puffy, quilty, like when they get all, what is that? When you wash and dry them and they scrunch up together and they get that really puffy, pretty look. I like that. Um, when you starch, they don't shrink as much, so you don't get that as much. So some people might like that. They might not like the look of, you know, when they get all crinkly. Um, I do. <laughs> but so you won't get that same result with starching. Um, so yeah, and then you have to starch the backing. You have to starch everything. If you're gonna starch the pieces, you gotta starch the binding, you use the whole thing, because you want it to all shrink the same. That's annoying. And uh, also, when you are sewing with fabric that hasn't been starched, it's really soft and pretty. Starching makes it rough and ugly, but but I still do it because I love the accuracy it gives me. It makes me feel better about the quality of what I'm sewing. So I do it. I do it. And it's not a huge deal once you get used to it. In the beginning you're like, oh man. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So I love using that starch. I've used a couple other ones and I just feel like this one works the best. It is annoying. I, just sh I try to do it outside. It smells bad. It's just, it is what it is. It's worth it though, to me. And then um, I got these clappers. I mean, these are fantastic. Um, this one's cool. It has a little pin cushion on top. But um, so what I'll do is I, after I, I sew pieces together, I'll set the seam, which means I'll just put my iron on them before, like while it's still like sewn together. I put the iron on it and then I open it up and press the seam one way the direction or open whichever the pattern calls for. And then when I do that I put this clapper down on it and it'll um, make it flat so your seams aren't as bulky. And I do that on a wool mat and um, I think with those things I get the best accuracy. So those are just things that I do that help me because people ask me, how do you get your blocks to be so accurate? That's how. It's a lot of work and effort, but it really is worth it because you want to be proud of your finished project. Now I have some quilts that are ridiculous. I'm going to one day, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my worst quilts. Yes, I already know of several that I could show you guys. But I have some, and just the points are just gone. They're just gone. They got lost in the binding. They got lost in the other blocks. They're a mess. But I still love them. I can fold them just so to where you can't really even see. <laughs> they're, but they're my quilts. But I do feel better about putting them on display if I have accuracy. Mm -hmm. But don't give up because you'll get there. You just keep pushing through. Um, other products, I was, oh, I was going to tell you. Okay, so, so. I put on Instagram um, a basket full of scraps and it was overflowing and I needed to organize it. I didn't want to organize it. So I just threw it in another, a bigger basket. So and several people were like, is that all the scraps you have? No, those are just my starched scraps. So what I do is I have a system of all my starched fabric goes into one bin, basket, whatnot. And then if it's smaller than a fat quarter, I will cut them up into strips. Let me get my bu my bucket. I'll show you. Okay. So if they're smaller, okay. So this goes to four and a half. Anything bigger than that, then it's a pre-cut, right? I'm stuck. Okay. So I cut them and I put them in here. Strips. I don't do squares. I do strips. And so I start with like well, I think I go down to one inch. Yep, one inch. So my one inch to two inches are in here. Lights and then darks and then so on and so on 
And um, so when I am working on a project and I know that I need a three and a half inch something, I can go to the one and find it. And this helps me stay organized and it's, I love scrappy quilts so that helps me with um, doing that more quickly than having to dig through a huge pile of scraps. So when I'm really good and diligent, I work on the scraps and get them all put in the system. And then uh, I'll just show you. So they look like this in there. So that is <laughs> so that is my starched scraps that I have organized. If they're bigger than that, they go into other things or if they're bigger than a if they're a fat quarter um, starched or not not starched I still put them in these I love these things I got them years ago at Target maybe not years ago two years ago I don't know at Target and I put them in here fold them up put them in here and they stack very nicely on top of each other and I have a shelf What's my here a lot of them and I need to buy more but um, but if they are starched, I'll label them starch scraps, um, so I know that they not to mix them up with the other ones that I have that aren't starched. It's annoying, but it's okay. It's fine. And then uh, so those are just a couple of tips that I wanted to throw out there. Um, if you can think of anything else that you're wanting me to show you guys. I know that you guys are asking me for tutorials, and oh my gosh, I'm just such a nervous wreck doing tutorials. I don't want people being, <laughs> you shouldn't do it that way, or I don't know. I just get in my head about it, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do a tutorial. I don't know. But if I can talk to you guys about things, I'm more than happy to. So if you have any questions, and I know I take a minute to get back to you guys. Um, sometimes when, this last one, I put my, my cross stitch and my quilting videos close together, and that might have been a mistake because I was very overwhelmed. But, um, but I love the comments. I love reading them. I love the suggestions because I learned so much from you guys. And uh, I'm learning all the time. So please, please put them down below. And uh, any questions or anything, anything I can show you guys that I'm able to show you. <laughs> um, so I have some really cool, exciting news that's coming. Okay, so my video just, I talk too much. Oh my gosh, it stopped recording. <laughs> okay, so go back. I'm gonna hopefully I can just piece all this together. Okay, so I had some exciting news and I am over the moon excited about this. So the other day, oh, if you guys know me at all, you've been watching me, following me on here on Instagram, you know one of my all time favorite people is Betsy Chechian. I love her fabric, her designs, her quilts, the, everything speaks to me. I love her books. She's fantastic. And I have told my husband a million times, if I could meet anybody, any fabric designer, any designer, it would be her. And um, the other day, I got a message uh, from her friend, and um, Renita, and she asked if my mom and I would be interested in going to a retreat with them. I about lost it. <laughs> you can ask my husband. When Betsy first followed me on Instagram, I went ballistic. And he even makes jokes about, Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. It's hilarious and annoying and embarrassing. But I'm just keeping it real with you guys. So exciting. So I was just like, of course. Of course I can go to that. And um, so I reached out to my mom, and she's also going to go with me. And then they asked if, uh, if I wanted to, I could bring two friends and so I thought about what friends I think would most love this experience and I reached out to them and of course they were like yes and so I'm going to retreat with Betsy and her friends and I cannot even put into words how excited I am and uh, so that's coming up next month and uh, I feel an extreme amount of gratefulness that I was invited. So cool. So I'm going to be thinking about projects that I'm going to be able to bring there and whatnot. So my plans will probably change a little bit. And so, but crazy excited about this. And um, it's 
it's in East Texas. It's only like a two hour drive, so it's not too bad. Um, but if you're my friend, you know I don't like leaving my bubble. But it's totally worth it. <laughs> so we'll do that. But I'm going to keep you guys updated with how it goes and what I and what I experience and everything. And this will be my second quilt retreat. So beyond excited about it. And uh, so yeah, that's just huge news. And uh, so that's coming up. And then what else is coming up? Uh, I guess that's about it that I can talk about right now. There's something coming up, but I can't talk about it yet. So I'll keep that. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'm gonna leave it here and try to put this video together. It's gonna, it's, I feel like I went down a lot of rabbit holes. We'll see, hopefully it didn't drive you too nuts. But yeah, I'm gonna clean this mess up because my cousin is coming tomorrow and she sleeps right here. So I gotta clean all this up and make room for her. And uh, so, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm forgetting something to tell you guys. I'm just so excited about the upcoming retreat that I can't think of anything else. And my whole brain is just, it's gone. That's all I can think about. <laughs> so, um, thank you for watching. Please leave comments down below about, you know, if there's something that I can help with or talk to you about or you guys got something for me that I can go check out because you guys have given me some gr oh that's another thing so I was going to mention the ones that I've been watching lately with the quilting so the quilting with the sister release definitely go check them out it's a great format you know just like the floss tubes and then um the last homely house that's Kate she is so fun to watch I have enjoyed watching her forever and it, she recently did a video with her son sewing. It was hilarious. You gotta go watch her. She's there's something about certain people that they can just be sitting there hand stitching. Her and uh, the Catherine the uh, K3N cloth tails. You can just I just stitch and cross stitch and listen to them, and it's just very relaxing and fun to listen to. And so definitely go check them out. And then. Um, if uh, you're just here, you're uh, a quilter, and there are some floss tubes that you could watch that also do quilting. Lori Textilist, she's amazing. She always shows beautiful quilts. And uh, I don't know if it was her, it was her. She showed some patterns like, oh, I have that pattern, and it reminded me, and I need to get back out and start working on those. But um, she's really great too. So, um, and then of course Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, she does uh, she does quilting also. Um, at the end of her videos so those are really great ones to watch and um, yeah I'll be back as soon as I have things to show and thank you for watching all right bye